Hello everyone and welcome to a first look of the Desiro City Class 700, probably one of the most anticipated DLCs of Trainsome World 3, maybe even of Trainsome World as a whole. It is just, I mean, what a train. Let's just, should we just jump straight into it? Let's jump straight into it. Okay, we're in the cab and this feels Really, really weird, considering I've played this on the Trainsim Classic with the Armstrong Powerhouse one on Trainsim Classic for quite a long, a long time. So it was really weird to be on Trainsim World in a 700, but we're in it. Uh, and this is the reduced length unit, um, which is eight coaches, as you can tell by the RLU eight reduced length unit, eight coaches. Uh, okay, I'm guessing a relatively similar setup to that of the Trainsim Classic one, and as out of most trains. There you go, so we've got the headlights, uh, I suppose daylight, well we've got light, night light on there, daylight and tail lights. Let's go for daylight. Um, you've got the GSMR, doesn't, there's not really, there's not any more functionality than what we sort of are used to now, it just sort of turns on and that's about it and shows the head code to so a 9 Papa 06 which should be a service to Luton. Uh, we've got cab air conditioning which you can turn on uh, let's do let's do automatic. There you go. It's on it's on automatic now. Uh, let's close that down. So there's a little bit of functionality with the, uh, the with the screen here. Oh, you can actually hear the AC as well. I don't know how well you can hear it. Let me quickly turn up the. Uh... Yeah, you can actually hear the air conditioning coming on. Well, I might I might get that off. Um, let's uh, go back to there. Let's uh, let's turn it off now. <laughs> Just little things like that. We can actually hear it. Um, I suppose safety systems, we want to get them on. Uh, vigilance, uh, DSD, uh, and AWS. Where's AWS on there? We'll set that to that. Uh, AWS, there it is up there. That should now be on. Uh, why has it not done the self-test sequence? Ah, now it has. Ready? Oh, yes. And same with the DRA as well. If we put the DRA on. All very bright and then take it off ready they've also got little prompts now to say what the button is DRA driver reminded appliance which I don't think they used to have as well um, so you haven't got the the CCTV screens working but I think is this the HMI uh, which which is working here somewhat uh, so there's a few little bits you can press uh, not much but yeah you know, there's a bit of sort of interactability of what you can do can't change the PIS manually slightly disappointed but oh well um, let's get the door shut I should say big thanks to Telltale Games for giving us a key to show it off but here we go our first run <sighs> right, here we go let's go hopefully that's it there you go that's it for the setup uh, let's turn off we don't need any of that on actually Turn that off, turn that off. Let, and now I'll be quiet and let, let, let you listen to the train. There it goes, leaving rain and behind. But yeah, we're off. It feels really weird being in this. It feels really weird, but... We're in, and we're driving up to 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 Dartford. It's about forty-five minutes or so to get up to um, Dartford. And once we get to Dartford, I'll show you all the sort of bits you can do: services, scenarios, journey mode. But we are off on this gorgeous sunny morning, and I think I'm actually set to dynamic weather. So fingers crossed it won't start raining and be foggy and cloudy. Hopefully, it doesn't become like that. Get that up even more. Also, take a look at the interior as well. We probably will be late on this service, but we're observing the beauty. You can open the window as well. But yeah, this is the Dash Zero. So it's uh, it's eight coaches long, not twelve like the Dash ones. The Dash one isn't included, uh, which I know a lot of people have been a bit sort of like, mm, why is that not included? Are they going to be sort of sold separately or? Uh, but no, the dash zero does. Well, dash one doesn't run on this route. Um, oh, there's even a wind sound as well. I just kind of sound really weird, but it almost feels like there's not a windscreen. Now, on most of the trains, you can sort of see there's a windscreen, whereas on this, it just feels like it's just completely open and there's no windscreen. 
Uh, but then it is, well, it, it's open. <laughs> it's a very clean windscreen. Lovely. So we're getting a bit of speed on us. I won't do HUDless for this one. I'll keep the HUD on just so you can sort of see how it performs, you know. You can see little finger uh, prints on the uh, on the CCTV. Is this the DMI, the CCTV screen, which is cool? Oh, sort of the screens up there. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of videos on the 700 as I go on them quite a lot off. Well, quite a lot really. This well, not every day, but very very often I go on the uh, 700. So I'm pretty uh, pretty good with these ones. Coming down to 60, there we go. And you may notice there is no uh, 700 stop markers. Apparently they haven't been able, I don't know why, but they haven't been able to, uh, they haven't made the release of the 700. So the the stop markers are coming, uh, but there's not going to be, not going to be yet. It's not going to be when it releases. Which again is a little bit disappointing as sort of the train and the stop markers go hand in hand. But hopefully it won't be long until we do see them added. So that being the RLU board, uh, the all board, and I think maybe even you might see an FLU board as well. And the brakes are very good as well. So we can come into the station quite quickly and still come to a nice gentlish stop. And they're quite quiet as well from the inside. There we are, this is Gillingham. See what I mean by the fact you can come in quite quickly? I think we entered at about 45 miles an hour there. And we're still, yeah, quite a gentle stop. Very clicky. So you probably have the all marker on on this here. Here we are. Right, let's take a look at the interior. Let's put the DRA on, otherwise everyone will scream at us. And get it on, get it on. Uh, is there a door, a button to open the door? Uh, door key switch. Does that allow us to do the door? Oh no, hang on, no, that's for the. No, not that. Uh, cap door. Now oh, there we go. Open cap door left. Now you've got to click it. It's like a two-step animation. So you've got to click it once to unlock it, and then again to well, sort of pull it across. Cool. But yeah, here it is. Here's the interior. You've even got like a bit like well, unlike the train sim classic version. You've got sort of the 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 ramp up to the uh, to the cab. It's slightly higher up, and there's the amazing looking PIS, which is, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good representation of the real PIS on the train. So it's going to Chatham, Rochester, Strood, Higham, Gravesend, Northfleet, Swanscombe, Greenhive, Stone Crossing, Dartford, Slade Green, Abbey Wood, and it goes tons and tons of stations up to Luton. Obviously, we don't take it as far as Luton, we go as far as Dartford. So, yeah, pretty good representation of it. They've done quite well with that. I mean, I didn't think it would even look like this. I thought it would literally be Destination Luton and maybe... Um, just not even like this. So it's good that it's like this. Cool. It does do another screen. There you go. It does that screen as well. Which is quite cool. Quite a new addition, I think, this is on the uh, 700s. And uh, then we come through. This is first class, which just still ironing board seats. That's quite cool as we sort of walk through. You haven't got the uh, maps either, although you have got the safety information, but I think the maps are licensed by another company, not GTR themselves. Um, so yeah, it could be a licensing issue um, with getting the maps in. You've got the uh, cycling area. I'm going to be a bit picky here, but I can't see the straps. The little um, Velcro straps, which... Um, and you can't go in the toilet. Little Velcro straps, which they have for the uh, the bike area. Right, let's um, let's go back in, back into the cab. Let's go through this door. 
There we go. Get the door shut, and it will be Chatham next. Please check the signal. My signal's clear. Do I hear a 465? There's a 465. And there's another 700. I think you've also got the little depot uh, thingy as well. I don't know if that's a hotkey for that. Is there a hotkey for that? Oh, I was on for the signal bell. Not that that really gets used. Yeah, you've got the uh, depot warning horn as well. But off we go. Onwards to Chatham on our magical journey in the 700. Still feels really weird to be in the 700 on here, but we're, we're in it. It's out. Well, it will be out relatively soon when you're watching this. It was very strange to be driving it though on Train Sim World. I think the seating position is actually a bit further back on Train Sim Classic because I think you can see those screens a bit more. So I think you're a little bit further forward on uh, Train Sim World, which is probably is more realistic. There you go, that's coast it at 50. That'll be down to 30 next. And it is a digital speeder as well. I mean, the only gauge in here is the, uh, is the brake one there. So the rest of it's uh, well, digital. It is a relatively modern train. These entered service in 2016. Uh, even though I, st I still consider them new trains, but they've been, what four, five, six, seven years already. Um, but they're, they're still new trains. They're, they still very much seem like new trains. Because these replace the old three nine uh, three nine three one nine fleet. And I suppose the 377-5s, uh, which first Capital Connect had, uh, and then obviously Thameslink when they took over. There we go. So yeah, there's, there's not much audio from the cab, uh, but I suppose it's relatively quiet within the cab. And then we come into Chatham Station. So we're all stops to um, to, to Dartford, as Thameslink are. Thameslink are slow trains. But that's why they're quite cheap, though. Now, if you're buying a travel card from where I am, it, Thameslink is always the cheapest option, because it's just a slow train. Or slower train. Right, this is Chatham. There we go. Cool. Uh, you've also got the light which is on here for the sort of for the pantograph. It's always on. Even at daytime it's it's still on. I suppose as these go into the tunnels. And there is AC sounds on it and the panto does go up as well. Uh, which we could actually do now. Shall we, shall we do that? I don't want to break it. Uh, right. Oh, God, that one goes off, I think. Let, let's do a power changeover. I'll set that to off. Wait for it to do its thing. It's taking a while. Okay, then we'll then set that to AC. And that should then start flashing, and it should go up, I believe. <laughs> if we have, if we have, maybe we haven't done it right. Got another train coming in. It's very, very bright though, isn't it? Very bright. Oh yeah, so that's uh, it's on. That would help. Is it gonna go up? Probably doing it wrong, aren't I? Let's move the panto doesn't go up unless you're on um, you know, a route with. With the panto stuff, it might be sort of forcing it to stay down. Maybe. Have we still got power at the moment for... If we try and get the doors shut. I'm thinking maybe it's sort of forcing us to be in DC. Let's try and get moving. Oh no, okay. Uh, it, it hasn't. Alright then, well, let's uh, try and 
sort this malarkey out. You go off. I didn't want to put didn't want to put the panto up. Let's try again. On. I should put the panto up, I believe. There's both of them come up. Both of the ones on the uh, unit. Oh, is it be maybe because that one's underneath there? It doesn't want to come up? Maybe. It might, might be because this one's underneath here. It's like, nope, don't want to go up. Okay, well, let's get this sorted again. All right, you go. Right, right mess we're making here. Right, should we try that? We are going to be late on this service. Oh, now it's fine. We'll try again a bit later on. But it might, it might have been because we were under that low bridge there. It just sort of forced it to not go up. So we'll try again once we're slightly more open. But off we go. And we're on the Xbox Series X for this. So you might hear slightly distorted sound. That's an Xbox thing. And yeah, this DLC is £12.99, which I would say is a very generous price. I did think it would be £14.99 or even more than that, but no. £12.99, uh, which is only about a quid and a half more than the old sort of train DLC price. And for this train as well, the 700 I think £12.99 is, is, is good. And I know I did get this for free, but even if I didn't, I would have got it for £12.99. Then you go through the old Rochester station. Yeah, lots of little details on here though. It's cool. And it's actually been done correctly. Whereas the Train Sim Classic version, um actually it's probably best not to talk about the Train Sim Classic version. But yeah, this one's actually, you know, representative of a seven hundred. And sounds like a 700 well I think there is a few I think yeah, I think some of the, they actually have um, got some of the audio of Armstrong Powerhouse uh, who has helped out Dovetail in the past with other trains the 377 387 uh, and the 465 and the 66 as well uh, although I've heard somewhere that they might have used some audio from the class 350 that's also a Desiro well, this is a Desiro city so the sounds not might might not be you know exactly on point, but they are you know good enough. So we try that again, right? Let's try it again, right? I don't know if you have to do that for the um, for DC. Right, let's try and put the panto up now. Right, we're now off DC. Is that going to put the panto up? No. Well, yeah, maybe it's just forced to stay down on this route, maybe. That might be the case. I should set that to, to on. It should, well, go up. Yeah, it might it might be forced to stay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that it might be forced to stay down on this route as well. It's not supposed to be... Um, not supposed to be up. There you go, and that's already back to normal. Power's already back on. Right. Let's get going. Maybe we'll have a test run of this at some point on a on an AC route. And we're off. I'll be quiet. And it is quite a bland livery, the Thameslink one. Um, but yeah, it's obviously as as it is in real life, it's not the most colourful of liveries. Um, but yeah, there's Thameslink. What are the best looking Desiro cities? The 707. That thing is beautiful looking in the uh, southeastern city beam livery. Although that doesn't run on this route though. Or do some of them run down to Gillingham? No, no, I don't think they do.
and then pop that down to 20. Yeah, so Thames Link is part of GTR. Um, so that being Govia, Thames Link Railway, so Southern, Thames Link, Great Northern, uh, and Gatwick Express is GTR. So Thames Link's part of that. So I'd imagine if they can do, well, we've got Southern, Gatwick Express, and Thames Link in the game now. Great Northern when. <laughs> that was a perfect opportunity for an East Coast Mainline South DLC. Down to 15. There you go, as we come into Strood. Looking busy as it is sort of the morning time. Well, it's still quite early in the morning, but it feels busy. Why has it got its tail lights on? Maybe it's going the other way. And this adds 80 extra services to the route. 80. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but then they do run every half an hour. So when you put, you know, there's 24 hours in a day, probably take away six hours, or maybe four four hours, um, sort of between midnight and sort of 4 a.m.-ish. That leaves you 20 hours, so to fit 80 into 20 hours is, is pretty good. And here we are, this is Strood. Put that down. So I'll try and sort of stop on the monitors ish. And here we are. This is Strood. The slow place. Oh, and there's no announcements on the train either. There's the ironing board, the infamous ironing board seats you can see there as well, which yeah, look as they do. A sort of the a very bland maquette. I mean, it's literally just sort of blue and then sort of a few dots here and there. There's not really much going on. But yeah, the interior looks good though. Right, let's get going. Leaving behind Strood. Ooh, that's nice. And we're off. We are out of here. Out of Strood and then onwards to Higham. So this video, probably about an hour or so. Um, yeah, we'll, see, we'll do this service and then we'll have a look at sort of what's to offer. So it does give you quite a nice um, amount of sort of service time, but yeah, about 45 to 50 minutes per service. So I can't really complain that it's too short. I mean, 45 minutes, 50 minutes is sort of perfect. Let's be that up to 70 in a second. Quick slurp on my drink. Oh, the, the the train speed and the, and the speedo on the HUD are actually out of sync at the moment. The one in the train is saying 16. The one the overlay is saying 15. Right, let's get that up to 70. Full whack on that. And I'll turn on the cab light as well. I just need to sort of see what that's like. There's the cab light. And that was the cab light. Now we got some points as well. In fact, let's get some points for using the wipers as well. Oh, it does squeak as well. As it's dry, so. But out we go. I don't know, what does everyone think so far? Sort of the first 20 minutes or so of us driving. What do you think of the train? Put your thoughts in the chat, comments. I so said I do go on this train an awful lot, um, and I'd say yeah, it's a, it's a very good representation of it. The model's nice, the sounds are nice, 
Um, I'm just going to point out, I'm not uh, like a sound expert. Uh, oh, there's the other one there. Uh, hang on, that's what that is, Pantograph up. Don't know. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not a sound expert, so don't be like, oh my god, all the sounds are wrong. Oh, how dare you say they're correct. Uh, as I know, we'll probably have a few people saying, oh, the sounds are all wrong. But to someone who goes on them quite regularly, it sounds pretty decent to me. Is that another one already? Oh, that's a javelin. Is that a javelin? Yeah, jav. So with those AC Plus services, there's going to be a lot more sort of congestion on the line, which is fun. So more chasing yellows and stuffing up reds and all that fun stuff. More spads, I'm sure. Let's start popping that down. Just looking at the timetable, the timetable isn't really that tight. I mean, we've been going sort of quite slow as we sort of looked at the train, looked at all the bits and bobs, and we're still, you know, we're only about a minute or two late, and there's another train already. Already another train. Don't want to really overshoot. I'm probably going to miss the stop marker, aren't we? We're coming a bit too fast there. Saying that, actually, oh, that's not... Okay, alright. Look at that, boom. <laughs> it's not too bad, actually. I thought we were going to go past that, but no. We're all good, we're, we're good. What about that tone of the horn? Hmm. Got a couple there as well. A bit some bobs on there, hot surface. What's that there? The R pick for normal. Oh, hello. Must be in line with pipe. Okay. Yeah, so, so sort of usual leveling of detail on there. It feels weird to be stopping at Higham as well. There's not really any train stop at Higham uh, in, without the 700. Oh, that was nice. You could hear the um, you could hear the brakes coming off once the doors are shut, and we put it into forward again. You could sort of hear the brakes going, tss, 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 and then off it went. There's definitely yeah, there's definitely room for improvement on the audio, but it's good. It's to a, it's to a good quality. I think one would be the, the sort of, uh, well, I don't know what the sound is, the re reverberation of the motor sound seems to come in a bit too quick. It's sort of, sort of as soon as you put it on the throat, it's like straight away top noisiness or top volume. Whereas in real life, it sort of, I suppose, fades in a bit more, fades in more when you begin. And we've got Gravesend in four miles as so we come up to Who Junction. Trying to get a nice screenshot along this bit as well as it's all flat. And in a straight line. Yeah, it does feel very weird. And you've got the blind as well, which you should be able to pop down. I always look at that and think it's that, and I'm like, oh no, it's actually up here. Yeah, you've got the blind there. Through we go. Try and get a screenshot if we can. We're on Xbox, so it's a bit more trickier to take screenshots. Just want to make sure we're not going to be speeding. Yeah, got to do the uh, the horn. There you go. As we uh, make our way through, that'll be a nice one to get. I'll probably get it when there's like a buffer in the way. No, 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 there we go. That'll do. Should we get another one? I get another one as well. Cool. A couple of screenshots there of the uh, seven. Oh god, the cat's arrived. Cover the power button. Not you all like pressing the PC power button. <laughs> Stop the recording. And the cat's joined us as well for an early look of the seven hundred. And of course, whacking things off the off the top. Number four six five. So the route is 
loitered with uh, with trains. And not a shortage of trains. And the route is basically complete now. There is, well, basically all the trains which run on this route. So that the 377-5s, did they run on here? And the 466, no, I don't think they do. No, I don't think they do. So I think for the most part, most of the trains which do run on here are now in, which is great. So sort of almost like a complete route. And it would be nice to see more ex more extensions for this route as well. I mean, now we've got the 700, maybe we can see something like the North Kent line a bit more further on, maybe up to London Bridge. But I think that's slightly wishful thinking. Let's pop that down. Down to 50. Bit of breakage sounds there as well. After Gravesend, we're on to the slow bit over to Dartford. So I know, yeah, I think all the stations. Which I think some of the southeastern services do do. The 465s are the ones which start at Gravesend. I think some of them, yeah, some of them do currently stop at all of the stations. But not, you know, they don't continue on to rain them though. So if you like a very slow service, stopping at most stations, or all stations, this is for you. Or well, I suppose if you just want to improve your southeastern high speed experience, this is for you. And also, you may have, or you may have not noticed, but this train does have a massive windscreen. Not, you know, not that sort of, you're not to the side like you are on the Electrostar. That's also another sort of perk of it, which people people like. Into Gravesend. But yeah, who knows these trains? Who's been on these trains before? Maybe you commute on the ironing boards every day. I think it's right to the end of the platform here. There's the 465. But yeah, South East and High Speed though is it's definitely one of the best UK routes there is now. I mean, just having the 700 and the, sort of the variety of services as well is just mental i mean for a uk route the, the sort of amount you can do the amount of different trains you can drive is is fantastic only a minute late see so yeah, the timetable is quite lenient or at least this one seems to be in this specific service which is uh nine paparo six And we've got 0, 1, 3 for this. There's also a manual uh, for this train as well. There's quite a lot of sort of DLCs don't really tend to have manuals anymore. Uh, but this one does. Which was written passionately by James, who is also known as Mole Man, who works for Dovetail Games. Now oh, you got that as well, that's cool to see. I don't know, why, why would you use that? I suppose, is that when... No, I don't know, but yeah, you've got that on there as well. Wouldn't be no, yeah. I was gonna say it wouldn't be when you're using ETCS, but no. But you can put it onto one side. ICE has that as well. ICE three. And let's go North Fleet next. Which is probably one of the stations you probably wouldn't have stopped at very much. And off we go. Let's watch it going out.
All right, guys. Very nice. And then you've got the screen at the front as well, which says we're going to Luton, which looks pretty good. Just overall, it's, it's a very nice looking train. Maybe you don't agree, maybe you do agree. But yeah, I think it looks pretty, pretty nice and pretty prototypical of the real thing. So it's a tick in my books. Just over a mile to North Fleet. Which we'll be saying goodbye to the sort of the high speed, well not goodbye, but we'll be saying we'll be going past where the high speed lines uh, go off. There's the DSD going off. Yeah, only a mile to uh, to North Fleet now. Which we should be able to whiz into at relatively high speed. Not 70 miles an hour, but probably about 35, 40. Right, start slowing down for North Fleet. Slam those brakes on. Actually, yeah, the brakes are very good on this train. Or well, they're they're, to, uh, uh, they're at a good level of breakness. Yeah, good to see North Fleet again. Feels like it's been ages since I've last stopped here. Is it right to the end of the platform? Probably. Feels like you're going uphill, uphill here, but the gate, the, the overlay says we're not. I always thought this was uphill. But clearly not. Hmm, I'm just going to go a bit past there, which is a bit weird. I'll, I think I'll go here. Here we are. Uh, I don't think there is any short platforms on this route for the Dash Zero, so there's no sort of need for SDL or anything like that. I think all of the platforms on here can accommodate eight coaches. Or oh, does Swanscombe? I think it does. Swanscombe's a little, little, a little diddy station. Also, something which is going to sound a little bit silly, but there could be a little bit more squeak with the door when it closes. Because when they close, there's sort of a little bit of a squeak. Yeah, if you watch the video, there's a little bit of a squeak sound as they close. And off we go. Swanscombe is the next stop. Going over high speed one. Sometimes if you're lucky you get a javelin crossing underneath you. And this is Swanscombe which I think is an 8 coach platform station. There's another 700, always beautiful to see. Yeah, that's definitely an eight coach station. Stone Crossing is the other Diddy little station, but I reckon that probably can take uh, all eight coaches as well. Here we are. Shall we try the Pantograph again as well? Yeah, let's try the Pantograph again. So I'm pretty certain I'm doing it correctly. But yeah, it might, it might sort of be forced to stay down on this route as well, why would you put the pan scruff up? Let's just go straight over like that. Let's 
let's have a look. Well, unless I am forgetting something or doing something wrong, it doesn't seem to be going up. Um, let's have the rear one. Yeah, that's down as well. So it might it might just be forced to stay down on this route, which makes sense. As well, why would you have it in AC? You wouldn't have it in AC because <laughs> you wouldn't get very far. It would be ludicrous to put it into AC. Green hive next. Be a nice, pleasant service. Oh, it still feels really weird just seeing the 700 in this game. We've been waiting so long for the 700. I suppose since the since the Brighton mainline. Uh, and it's finally out. It just feels weird. It does feel weird, but it's out. And it also feels weird because it's a train I go on so often as well. So when the 377 first released, it was like, wow. Uh, you know, I go on this train, and same with this one. But I'm more on the full length unit, but this is the reduced length unit. Well, sometimes my local service is a reduced length unit. Rarely, but sometimes. And down to Green Hive. Well, start slowing down for Green Hive. And it's also quite weird as well, because when you're seeing this video, this will be my first day on, well, well starting my full-time railway job. Because I've been doing sort of part-time customer service stuff with an agency, but uh, I've gone full-time now. I've gone up, gone up a notch here, full-time, with a certain train company, uh, which, uh, well, I mean, I'm driving one of the trains right now. Or at least the group. So it's quite, yeah, quite a coincidence that this has come out, and we're showing it off today. Well, I'm recording this a few days before, but when you are seeing this, let's have a look at the um, CIS screens. Have a little look, to see uh, sort of the frequency of. I guess it's probably every 15 minutes. So I think it was every 15 minutes before on here. So every 10 minutes. The next one's at 42 pass. What about third? Okay, so yeah, still, well, every 15 minutes or so. No, we're delaying every other train. <laughs> but not the third one. The next one, the core section now Blackfriars, City Thames Link, Farringdon, St Pancras International. Oh, no, it stopped. Why does it stop there? What about in the train? Does it stop at St Pancras on the train? Let's have a look. I'm interested now because it didn't show it on the CIS. What about on here? There'll be St Pancras, Kentish Town, West Hampstead, Thames Link, Cricklewood, Tendon, Millhill Broadway, Elstree and Boreham Wood. Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't stop at Kentish Town or Hendon or Cricklewood. Oh, I always thought this went. I always thought. I always thought this one went slow up there from St Pancras up to. Uh, well, basically the whole way I thought it went slow at every stop. But no, it doesn't stop at... doesn't stop at Cricklewood, Hendon or Kentish Town. I don't know, there was Radlett on there. Does it stop at Radlett either? And we're off. I don't know, because there'll be the Sutton services which stop at all stations. Which are the nine... Are they nine Romeo services, the Sutton ones? Or one of the Sutton ones? Well, I think it's nine Oscar and nine Romeo, which are the sort of Wimbledon Loop slash Sutton services. I think definitely nine Romeo. Not sure about nine Oscar. You might not, you might not have any clue what I'm on about there, uh, but that is the head code. So this is a nine Papa service, the uh, Luton to Raynham services, Horsham to Peterborough, nine Juliet, um, nine Tango services. They're the 
Bedford. Uh, Brighton to Bedford service is a thing. And three bridges to Bedford. Oh, no, I think that's Nine Romeo. Yeah, no, I think Nine Romeo is three bridges to Bedford. So Nine Oscar, is that the Saturn one? And then Nine Sierra is the Cambridge services. And this is Stone Crossing. Very skinny platform at this one. Oh, it wasn't want us to stop. Just up there. Yeah, so once we finish this service, we'll have a little look at what you can actually do in this train and what's to offer. As for all you guys now, it could literally just be one service. One service, one scenario, done. But now we'll take a look at the uh, timetable and scenario and there's actually quite a few scenarios for this one. A lot of scenarios actually. And then we have to give it up at Dartford. Hang on, next Dartford, then Dartford again. Oh that might be oh that might be a bug. Oh hello, calling it Dartford, Dartford. That could actually be a bug, actually. Um, I mean, it is pre-release, so... Well, they're saying that on the Brighton mainline, on quite a lot of routes, it will say sort of, you know, uh, say, for example, it will say Brighton and Brighton. So that's just sort of a PIS thing, I think. Dartford next, in just under two miles. Let's go full whack on that. Full shebang. We're off. Leaving Stone Crossing, Dartford next. If only we could take it beyond Dartford up the North Kent line a bit further up to uh, at London, maybe all the way to Luton. Well, that would be a bit of a weird route though to see. Sort of this and then that and then that and then the core and then also up the Midland Main line. I think that I think the the, the the best, or at least probably the uh, what's the, what's the word and probably the best. Or the most likely way we'd see the Thames Link Core is probably something like a, a Midland Mainline South route. Maybe they could do, I don't know, London Blackfriars to Bedford, just so we get the Thames Link Core, which I think a lot of people would be quite happy with. Because then it would be about 52, 53 miles. That was much again knocking stuff over. Oh, freight train. Which, yeah, southeastern high speed, if you haven't got it, do think about getting it. Because you get a lot of trains when you first get it. I mean, with the base package, it's the 395, the 465, the 375, and the 66. And there's DLC, Class 700 now, the 36 Euro Phoenix. Um, yeah, I think that are the DLCs for it. Yeah. Am I forgetting something? No. Oh, and the RHTT train. A railhead treatment train. Double yellow. The speed comes right down coming into uh, Dartford. But no, overall impressions, yeah, a lovely unit. Nice model to it. Uh, sounds, I would say, are good. Uh, I wouldn't say they're sort of, you know, 10 out of 10, absolutely perfect, but they are good. They're, they're, they're good. Um, but I wouldn't say they're, yeah, 10 out of 10. If anything, I'd say the sounds are probably maybe... I don't like rating stuff out of 10, but I'd say they'll probably be more sort of a, an 8 or 9 out of 10. So still at a good quality. And down to 20. There's a little nitpicky things. That's coming to Dartford, platform number 2. Lovely. Really, it still feels really weird to see in this train, but there we are. I wish we could continue, but no. And I'm guessing TPWS probably is operational. It says TPWS and AWS operational. So we'll come down to about 15. Otherwise the magnet will probably uh, 
Well, the grid will uh, get us for sp speeding up to a red. I was about to say, have we heard the AWS? But yeah, we have heard the AWS. Here we are. This is Dartford. Let's just listen to this one more time. Ready? Driver, you have reset the DRA. Please check the signal. Fantastic. Oh. Well, that was the first service in the... Oh, God, it's just amazing. First service in the 700. Puts a big smile on my face. Just having this train in the game, it's just... It's awesome. Especially, as I said, I go on this train a lot in real life. So, it just... I know. An even bigger smile. So, good job, Dovetail. Good job. Oh, and you've got the Thameslink uniform as well, as you can see the driver was wearing. There he is with his... Uh, ooh, I think you've ripped it a little bit. Uh, let's uh, let's go out to the timetable and let's see what the train has to offer, what bits you get and what bobs you get and you know, what you can actually do. Uh, okay, so to the trains. Pick a route. South East is a high speed. So scenario-wise, you get an awful lot of scenarios. Uh, you get uh, Desaro City on test, Desaro City shortened, Desaro City changeover, Desaro City... You can see where this is going. Desaro City skip. Desire City delays. Desire City showers. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scenarios. Seven hundred, seven scenarios. Nice and all ranging in time as well. Um, and then you also have got uh, uh, the training module as well. I know that would be on the train, wouldn't it? Uh, training module. Pick a train. So I don't really do. I don't usually do training. So I don't, there you go, the 700 uh, introduction, if you want to do the 700 introduction. I mean, UK trains are all very similar, master key in, forward, off you go. Um, timetable, you've got 83 services. So every half an hour, uh, and then you've got 9 Papa. I mean, that's I suppose, the last one of the night, or one of these. So this will be yeah, all through the night, really. Um, all the way through, every half an hour. There you go, so you've got a nice amount of services to And also, yeah, an ETS random to Rochester down loop. Um, and then any journey mode lovers, rail journeys, southeastern high speed. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably that. We built this Desiro City. Uh, so you've got the missing terms in Desiro Summer in the City, Desiro That Never Sleeps, and Desire. Um, so quite a few cool bits and bobs there. Um... But yeah, let's quickly just spawn back in because we got to see that we got to see the train again. Um, in fact, shall we spawn it on AC? Yeah, let's spawn it on AC because otherwise I'll probably forget to do that. Um, let's just do gloss up line, gloss up line. Uh, we'll quickly have to make a scenario for that. Uh, how do we do that again? Crates club scenario planner, gloss up, uh, crate new. Just, I don't know, seven hundred, seven hundred. Uh, yeah, fine. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to add new service. Uh, Ashbury's to, I don't know, Hadfield. Uh, go, go into there. Uh, 700. There it is. Ooh. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. Quickly go back. Hold on a second, everybody. Uh, so all the platforms are really bloody short on here. Uh, guide bridge through siding. We'll start there instead. Happy? Uh, 700. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's call it that. Why? Uh, yep. Uh, save and exit. Right. Let's try the 700 on AC. If it's working. I am recording this a few days before it comes out. So it might not be working just yet on, on AC. Right. Let's do that. Let's key in. Forward. Set to neutral first. Is it going to work on AC? We'll let that flicker. We'll, we'll make it so it stops flashing. Okay, it's stopped flashing now. And then power supply on. And that should be it. Oh, hang on. Oh, for God's sake. It's not even electric, is it? 
Of course we picked the one plot. Hold on a second, everybody. Let me quickly... Actually, let's quickly come out again. The one place I pick, and it's not the electric bit. It's just... It's going to happen, isn't it? The one the one place. I thought that might have been electrified. I probably should have thought. Probably not. Right. Scenario planner again. This one again. Edit. Uh, yeah. Edit. Timetable. Right, start. Just start Manchester Piccadilly. I know that one's going to be fine. Manchester Piccadilly. Gossip. Yeah, just go there. Done. 700. <sighs> then there. Right. Now shall we try it? Back in we go. Let's, let's give it a go now. I don't know, a lot of people have been like, AC sounds, AC sounds. If we can get it to do AC sounds, that is. Right. Shall we try again? Is it already up? Okay, it's not already up. Right. AC. So we'll let that do its flashing. I'm pretty this is how you do it. And then that goes to on. It's up. So yeah, it must just be forced down then on southeast and high speed. Right, we ready? I'll be quiet. Ooh. Right, okay. That's pretty good. We're going to be speeding out, speeding out of here. Sorry, GCR, if you're watching. Oh, sparks as well. And I did the braking as well. Emergency brakes, that is. Not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad, that. Uh, fairly... Yeah, so that's not too bad. I get it. It's not perfect, but it's, you know, I'll give it a sort of 9 out of 10. But yeah, good. Good that that's, um, that's in. So it gives you an, another option. Oh, we haven't got our headlights on. Oh, well. We're running on Glossip line. Uh, well, hopefully everyone has enjoyed that. That was the Class 700. Uh, very exciting stuff. Um... Uh, shall we do anything else? We're almost at an hour, actually. Sh shall we? Shall we? Let's quickly load back onto southeastern high speed. The route it should be on, and uh, we'll just spawn in somewhere and sort of watch the uh, trains. Just a couple of minutes, just to end us off. End us off nicely with a bit of train spotting. Seven hundreds. Uh, pick a route. Uh, southeastern high speed. Timetable on foot. Uh, what time's the seven hundred service? Uh, nine nine fifty five at Raynham. Nine fifty-five. Perfect at rain. And let's have a look. Let's watch it as it leaves. And there should also be sparks on third row as well. You should see that as well. Hopefully, you should should be able to. So you'll be able to do it doing sparky things. Here we are, Rainham. There's no C uh, C uh, CIS screen here, which it would be nice to see. Uh, but maybe we'll see that added when the stop markers get added. Two very nice sanding trains on this route. Well, the electric stars aren't bad either. In fact, let's get in. So let me in. Look, those are actually fully locked. Okay. Well, there we go. That is the class 700. Do let me know what you think of it. Do pop your thoughts in the comments below. Even if they're nasty comments, pop them in the comments below. Um, there it is. There it is. 700.056, that one. But yeah, hopefully everyone has enjoyed it. Massive thanks to Dovetail Games for giving us the key to show off. An absolute privilege to show off the Class 700 as well. It's a train I know pretty well. Um, so yeah, it's great to see it uh, represented in the game, finally. Um, there you go. It's, it's beginning. There you go. It's starting up. Um, yeah, links can be found in the usual places. Uh, Discord, PayPal, Merch Store. 
Apart from that, have a lovely rest of your day. This can be found on PlayStation, Xbox, Epic Games, Steam tomorrow if you're watching on release day for £12.99. Uh, and I think there may, may even be a discount as well uh, if you get it you know, within the first couple of weeks. There's a 47 ploughing through the station. Let, let's quickly escape. Let's get in. Go. In we go. Get out of all the noise. Let's sit in the ironing board first class. Why doesn't it let me sit down? It doesn't let me sit down in first class. Oh, there we go. Let's me sit down there. But yeah, thanks for coming in, and I hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. See you all. Take care. Bye, guys.